free chips define the Casa de Bandini experience almost as much as the oversized margaritas. And all of the chips served at the Carlsbad restaurant are cooked here. As you can see, we go through a lot of chips here at Casa de Bandini. And uh, we have a big vat that we make chips in. We go through about 32 five gallon containers of oil a week. That used cooking oil has to go somewhere. It's stored out back until Max Minahan picks it up. Go ahead, open my bin up. Unlock it. Take the cap off the hose. Go ahead and get the oil. Minahan works for an Escondido startup called Buster Biofuels. Turn the pump on. The company collects used cooking oil. Keep sucking. Filters it. Take my hose out. Treats it. Cap it. And turns it into biodiesel. Pack up and we're off. The firm has a number of customers, including Legoland. We have a variety of restaurants throughout the park that obviously produce grease through making the food. So we collect that and Buster Biofuels comes and picks it up to turn it into something usable. So the cars here are electric and they don't really run on fuel, but part of what Legoland is doing is helping build the energy future. We're using used cooking oil, which is a low value feedstock that we're able to uh, transform into biodiesel. Buster Halterman is the founder and CEO. What's going on, man? He's hoping to build a facility that'll be able to process all the used cooking oil he rounds up. The resulting biodiesel will be ready for the fuel tank. You know, most diesel engines need little or no conversions whatsoever, and it can literally be mixed with diesel fuel in virtually any mixture. So there's not a whole lot of infrastructure change uh, with the existing vehicles out there. Biodiesel blends are selling for as much as 30 cents a gallon less than regular diesel, but that can flip when the price of oil drops. Halterman says using biodiesel is like buying organic food. Sometimes the right thing costs more. However, he knows some people will only consider the option when fuel prices soar. You know, we can be highly competitive with petroleum diesel, and when prices are this high, you know, it's super appealing. Uh, the problem is, is our margins get squeezed, you know, when you get much lower than they are even right now, because we don't do the volume that petroleum companies do, so we need to thrive on higher margins. Higher gas and diesel prices are also fueling interest in other alternatives. We're selling substantially more of the alternative fuels um, than we were even a month ago. Mike Lewis is the general manager of Pearson Fuels in City Heights. His station sells regular gas and diesel, but also natural gas, ethanol, biodiesel, and propane. He says fuel sales are very sensitive to price. Ethanol 85 sales jumped from 250 gallons a day in February to 1,000 gallons a day in March. So a month later, we're doing four times as much. And what will happen if the price of gas falls, we won't sell 1,000 for very long, but it'll go down gradually and probably level off at a point above 250 where it started. He says the plateau always ends up being higher. As much as people hate to see the price of gas go up, over the long run, it does force the choices that are, don't have to be forced when gasoline's $2 a gallon. 